What's up, Bucks fans? Um, this is going to be a little awkward for me, but given the events of this whole last week, uh, with all the news about Jabari Parker, um, it kind of like I don't want to say inspired me, but it kind of triggered me more so than anything to like make this video, which is definitely inspired by Sith Lord of uh, 105.7 The Fam fame and Twitter fame. And Sith, I do love your videos, man, but one thing, it's 2018, landscape mode. Dump the portrait mode. Anyways, um, I was gonna let Bucks fans kind of be emotional about this whole thing because I knew it was gonna happen once the news came down that like people were gonna be upset um, about Jabari leaving, especially to go to the Bulls and that. Um, so it's like, all right, just let them have their moment, uh, be pissed off, and then like they'll get it together because like most Bucks fans that I know are pretty smart basketball fans. But like, there's some shit that, and I'm gonna try to keep my profanity down because I got the kids in the other room, but there's some shit that just like totally threw me for a loop and like pissed me off. Like, I saw a guy on Real GM, the Bucks forum, say like, Bucks fans are gonna look really stupid next year when Jabari's an MVP candidate for the Chicago Bulls. And like, dude, you are either like so emotional that like it's turned you into a different person or like you're definitely smoking crack cocaine and like you need to dump that shit. Like, there's nothing about Jabari Parker that says MVP candidate. Uh, I saw someone else on Twitter, who I normally would consider a good fan, say like, it was a slam dunk for the Bucks to bring Jabari Parker back. And I'm like, how could it be a slam dunk when this guy has so many damn red flags against him? Full disclosure here, like, I've been a Jabari Parker skeptic since he was at Duke, like, before he even came out and was picked by the Bucks, but I still cheered for the guy, like, I still rooted for the guy, like, I'm wearing the guy's fucking jersey to show you, like, and yeah, whatever, it's it's a jersey, it's it's not that big a deal, but, like, that just is kind of a gesture to say, like, I may not believe in you, but, dude, prove me wrong, you play for my team, like, now you're one of us, so I'm behind you, let's go, let's do it. So, like, let's talk about the stuff that's indisputable when you talk about Jabari red flags, and I'm talking about things that, like, even the biggest Jabari homers can't deny, like, the whole defense thing, like, this guy is not just a bad defender where you can be like, oh, you know what, like, you can just mask him, like, just kind of put him on the worst guy on the court. Like, no, his defense is literally, you could argue he's the worst defensive player in the league. Like, and that test both passes, like, the statistical test and the eye test. Like, he is so freaking bad off the ball that, like, it's costing your team baskets. Like, this dude, as soon as he, like, finds his man and leave him in the corner and then he's just, like, ball watching, and then out of nowhere, you see the guy streak to the basket right behind him, like walking to the basket for a layup or a dunk. Here we go. All right, all right, there's my guy. All right, he's good, he's good. Whoa, whoa. What's he doing with the ball in his hands over there? Look at him go. Oh shit, I gave up the lay. He's allowed to move? Like, when I'm just standing here, he can move behind me? So like, some people could argue that, sure, you can be like a bad defender and still have value in the league. And like, while that's true, uh, if you're talking about like being a franchise cornerstone for your team, like, you have to be so good on offense that you're putting up more than what you're giving up. Like, you have to be James Harden level on offense to, like, put up with the shitty defense. And, like, let's, let's, I mean, come on. Let's call a spade a spade here. Jabari Parker and James Harden, like, they're not even in the same stratosphere if you're talking about offense. Huge red flag. I mean, look at when Jabari Parker was a freshman at Duke in his one year of college. And you know, Duke got bounced in the first round of the tournament to, like, uh, I think it was uh, fucking Mercer, like some unknown team. And Coach K benched Jabari Parker in the second half because he was playing such terrible defense. Like, what does that say about a guy when you're, you're about to go down in this big upset and, like, you got to win this game if you're Coach K and supposedly your best player on the court, you're putting him on the bench. Like, that's how bad defensively Jabari Parker is. So I'm tired of people saying, like, oh, it's overblown how bad he is on defense. Like, no. He's one of the worst defensive players I've ever seen play basketball. Obvious next red flag. His health, the knees. I mean, you have two ACL tears on the same knee, and you're not going to help a team if you're sitting on a trainer's table all the time or you're rehabbing all the time. So Jabari's played, I think, like on average 45 games a season so far for the Bucks, And not only does that hurt you that he's not on the court, allegedly, but you talk about developing as a basketball player and developing basketball skills. So he missed all that time that he should be not only developing basketball skills, but 
getting chemistry with teammates and that's so much lost time that you can't make up for a guy that is you know 19 20 21 years old like that's when you should be developing those skills so when you hit like 25 26 27 like that's your basketball prime and you can just go so obviously you look at paying a guy like that and I'm not talking about the one year that he got from Chicago because that was a complete flyer but there was guys that wanted to give Jabari like four years 80 million like 20 million a year and you're like oh if he pans out like that's that's a pretty good deal like that's a that's a pretty good uh, bargain for the money but like it in the back of your mind you always have to be worried about the ACL like you look at a guy like Joel Embiid and I almost feel bad for Philly fans because like if I had to watch that guy play I would be holding my breath literally every time he touched the ball because like I'm just waiting for his career to end so like and if Jabari Parker gets a third ACL tear like th his career is over and if he's on your cap like for these four years that most Bucks fans I shouldn't say most but a lot of Bucks fans wanted like that's useless money that's that's doing nothing that's a huge chunk of your cap space that you can't obviously um, just say release him all right you know let's bring someone else in for that money this isn't the NFL let's talk about like Jabari like his value as a basketball player so sure he's got a lot of like natural great scoring ability but like what else does he do on a basketball court for you that really really stands out it's well documented that he's like a shit 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 defender and he's for a guy his size at 6'8 like 240 250 and his natural athletic ability and strength like he doesn't grab that many rebounds he's not a natural playmaker uh, he doesn't get your hustle plays like your steals and your block shots so like what value is he bringing to you other than like oh he's you know he's you know above average scorer like he's got great scoring ability I'll give the guy that but if you take away the explosiveness you know and if you talk about the ACLs like that's gonna go away um, now you're just depending on the guy as a shooter and he's looked pretty good as a shooter but like that's that's fine that's a sixth man to me that's a guy that like if your team is in a drought you bring him off the bench and like try to get him hot so you know maybe get gives a spark to the rest of the team and to me that's always been his ideal role as a basketball player but a guy like him with you know He's been propped up his whole life. He's, you know, one of these AAU kids and he's been on the national scene since he was 16 years old. Like, how's he gonna respond if you're just like, oh yeah, we want you to come off the bench. We saw how he responded when he was coming off the bench and he folded up and clammed up. The biggest red flag that you should have concerning Jabari Parker as a Bucks fan. Like, this guy fucking quit on your team. Like, and that's indisputable. He fucking quit. Like. In a playoff series that the Bucks lost in seven games to a team that was this close to going to the NBA Finals, like they were a breath away from going to the Finals this year in Boston, and you lose in seven, and this guy in game one and game two just loafs it, gives no effort whatsoever, blatantly, like in front of the whole world, tanked in front of you. Like, and why? Why? Well, because he was upset that he wasn't getting enough playing time that he thought that he should get. Well, guess what, buddy? Like, it's the NBA. This isn't high school. Shit is not just given to you because you're the son of an NBA player. Uh, you got to earn that shit. So, game one, he plays, I think, 14 or 15 minutes. He's, uh, his plus minus is negative 10, and the Bucks lose in overtime. And then game two, he played 10 minutes, and he was negative fucking 15 and plus minus. Like, that is mind-boggling that in 10 minutes, your plus minus is minus 15. And yes, that's a flawed statistic, but when you have a guy like that who is like loafy, this dude is walking up and down the fucking court, like getting back on defense by just with a casual stroll, like, well, fucking it's just going out on a Sunday afternoon for a little walk. Like, no, dude, fuck you. You are not a fucking baller, man. You could say all you want about a basketball player, his skills and that, but like the biggest like skill to me, and it's not even a skill, it's just a desire, the desire to win. And that's the difference between a guy like him and Giannis. Like, like, Giannis was given fucking nothing in his life. He was brought up in, like, squalor, and he was fucking selling, like, bootleg sunglasses to make a living. And Jabari's an AAU kid and the son of an NBA player and, like, given everything. And that's the difference between those two guys. Giannis, like, goes and fucking works, and he will do whatever he needs to do to win. And Jabari will fucking clam up, just like, like I said earlier, for lack of a better word, like a bitch. A lot of people around here will talk shit about a guy like Gary Payton. And that trade for Gary Payton, me as a Bucks fan, that was like maybe my lowest moment because Ray Allen up until Giannis was my all-time favorite player. But like 
even a guy like Peyton, who made it clear pretty much from the moment he was traded to Milwaukee that he was gone after the season, at least in the playoffs, like, the dude still fucking balled up and, like, tried and did his best because that's what a fucking warrior does on the court. So I don't want to hear this shit about, like, Bucks fans that are like, oh, Jabari, like, what a great guy. Like, I wish you the best except for when you play the Bucks. Like, fuck that guy. Say what you want. Like, yeah, he's a great person. He smiles for pictures. He does stuff in the community. And, like, he goes out and does his little PR stunts where he plays basketball in Bayview. So he could be like, hey, guys, I'm the good guy here. I wanted to be here. Like, no, dude, you're a fucking fake. You're a phony. You're a fraud, dude. As a basketball player, I'm sorry. Maybe as a person, yes, you're great. But as a basketball player, dude, you're nothing. You are fucking, again, phony as hell. Fake AF, as the kids would say. So, again... I got no sympathy for you. You fucking quit on my team. This video isn't meant to defend the Bucks' honor and like you know try to paint them as innocent in this whole thing. As a Bucks fan, you should still be pissed off at this franchise. Like they do so many terrible moves, but this move in a vacuum was not a bad move. It was like the right move to make. You want to be pissed off? Go ahead, be pissed off at the Bucks. Like be pissed off that they took Jabari and. They had a, a head coach that never believed him in the first place or like gave him the opportunities that maybe he should have had. But uh, be pissed off like that they had multiple opportunities to trade Jabari and get something for him, but they got cold feet, whether it be out of loyalty or just like stupid pride. Like John Hammond could have traded Jabari a couple years ago. Boston wanted to give us the third fucking pick for Jabari or Middleton. And that could have been like Jalen Brown who in a different universe, Jabari and Jalen Brown were kind of similar guys offensively. And we could have had that, but John Hammond, I'm guessing, was like, no way, this was my guy, this was my pick. That looks bad on me if I trade him a couple of years later. So be pissed off that the Bucks will just give away money without letting the market decide a guy's value. Like at fucking, you know, giving Tony Snell a four-year deal when he had no offer sheet to sign or like giving Miles Plumley a four-year deal when he had no offer sheet to sign and the year when the cap exploded and every expert was predicting just bad contract after bad contract after bad contract was gonna go out so like what do the Bucks do they go out and give bad contracts to fucking Henson and Toledovich and Delhi. you know be pissed off that the Bucks first round pick once again looks like dog shit in summer league and it looks like maybe they've blown five straight first round picks and they can't draft for shit in the first round. Be pissed off that like the Bucks have a stupid ownership structure with three owners trying to make like their decisions and you know having a like, one guy in power at a time like that's the stupidest shit that's clearly never going to work out. Like be pissed off that the Bucks use nepotism in their hiring and like have, you know, the owners kids working in major front office positions like be pissed off that they had a contingency plan with their GM when he left and rather than going with the plan that they had, they just decided to hire the first guy they saw from down the hallway. Like I said, Bucks fans, be emotional, be pissed off, but don't be pissed off at this move. Be pissed off that, or be, be emotional that it didn't work out. And it, at the end of the day, it wasn't going to work out with Jabari Parker here in Milwaukee. But I can't get behind this whole, like, I wish Jabari nothing but the best. Like, Sure, dude, you're a good person, but like, as a basketball player, you're soft as Charmin. Like, I, I hope you fail miserably in Chicago because number one, you quit on my team, and number two, you play for my team's biggest fucking rival now. I hope Giannis dunks in your eye and shits all over you every time you play against us. Lastly, before I go, Bucks fans, just remember, like, we need to stop being so vicious to each other on Twitter, social media, like. We all want the same thing. We all want the Bucks to be great. We want the Bucks to win a championship. Um, it's just we have differing opinions on how they're going to get there or how we want them to get there. So at the end of the day, disagree with me. If you don't like this video, I invite you to debate me. Send me a message. Send me a video. Make sure you watch the whole thing and take a few moments to reflect on the things that I'm saying before you just come back with like, oh, this guy's a fucking idiot. He's a hater. If you stuck with me to the end, I appreciate it. Again, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback, what you think. Um, also, check out the Buck Life podcast. That's no longer just a Bucks related podcast. We're doing all Wisconsin sports. Um, we'd love to hear from you, get feedback from all of our listeners.